Cambridgeshire is now a landscape of huge arable fields. Interspersed with old remnant hedgerows and woodlands. And we're in a spot here at the edge of Borley Wood because it's a great spot to look at the impacts of arable agriculture on our soils. Borley Wood is probably an ancient woodland, which means it may never have been cleared. I've checked some of the historical records and they generally go back to about the 14th century. But this, this is a, an old coppice stall. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tree that's been successively cut and as a result, this would have been the center of the tree here and it's sort of grown outwards. It's, it's a traditional um, forest management technique. And so even if this forest was cleared at one stage, it's been a pretty good long time ago. So why this makes such a good spot is it's because what we're going to do, also what I'm going to do, is dig some holes and look at the soil in the woodland. And then basically all I have to do is go 10 meters out and I'm into the, um, into the arable field. So, and, and dig some holes there and have a look at the difference. So let's have a look first at the arable field. It's quite difficult to dig. I'm gonna do a slice so you can have a look. Oh. <coughs> there we go. So we can tell a lot from the color. Um, there's very, you know, it, it's, a, it's a chalky soil, but there's very little organic matter in here. It's a very light color. And there's uh, not much in the way of root mass in here, of course, because it's sort of growing arable crops. I mean, it's breaking apart, it's, but it's very clay and it's, it's quite hard to actually break it apart, which is a good indication of how hard our soil, the soil organism, organisms are going to have to work. Look at this, to try and get, make a home in this soil. There's not much in there. So here we are, 15 meters approximately into the into Borley Wood. Look at how easy it is for me to dig into the soil. And look at that dark color. Look at all the, the root mass, look at all the organic matter the way it breaks up so easily in my hand. I've still got some of the soil from the arable field on stuck onto the spade there so you can see the colour <laughs> in contrast. It's a whole different a whole different ball game, a whole different environment for soil organism, organisms for our plant for the plants. She dig down with my hands into the soil. Beautiful. What every gardener would dream of. So let's just have a think about well, what are the key differences between the soil out in the arable field and the soil here. And really it just comes down to two things. Firstly, that you've got more organic matter accumulating in the soils here. You've got the ground covers, we've got the spring plants coming up, we've, I think some of these are bluebells. We've got the coppice stalls, they'll be in leaf in about another a few weeks. And then we've got the oak and other standard trees above. So they're all dropping leaf litter and organic matter to add to the soil. Meanwhile, out in the arable field, we just have a single layer of crop and a lot of obviously that is removed. The other thing too is that for, and, and I gather from the records, at least since the 18th century, that field has been probably been ploughed every year. And it's ploughed to create a structure for the plants to grow in. 
but you saw how how hard it was for me to break that soil apart meanwhile here we've had no mechanical cultivation and yet we've got this beautiful soil structure and it's really because that job has been left to the experts in creating soil structure the soil organisms so what's the take-home message well obviously for gardeners no dig is the way to go growing vegetables without digging your your soil all the time and leaving the, the creation of good soil structure to your experts, the soil organisms. But the other thing too is about having a cover on your soil of mulch all the time or preferably living mulch because it's easier to do. It's, it's plants that are growing producing mulch right where you need it because that's what's feeding your soil organisms and they're the ones that are creating that lovely dark colour and all that nice cranberry structure. For commercial growers well there's some innovative things happening around around the world and I've included some examples of these underneath this video.